Good morning. Um, this is our biggest Lenaro Connect yet. Um, so I'm really excited uh, to see everybody here. Welcome, everybody. Uh, this is the first time, I think, that we've got close to having as many attendees from outside Lenaro uh, as inside Lenaro. And that's, that's really exciting. It's a sign of, of how much the community is getting involved in what we're doing. So I want to talk uh, today a little bit about um, Lenaro and what our objectives are for 2012. Um, it's important to say that these are in addition to everything that we're doing at the moment. And uh, so I'm going to just give you a very brief background on why Lenaro exists and then talk about some of these objectives, these additional objectives for this year. The goal of Lenaro um, is to provide our members with first class open source technology for their SOCs um, and to make ARM one of the leading architectures in open source. Uh, the company's structured as a not-for-profit software engineering company. We're not a standards body, we're not a, a, a talking shop, we're an engineering team. And today we have over 120 full-time engineers. If you do the math, that's a pretty expensive proposition. Um, building a team of, of this size, focused on open source and kernel, um, is expensive, and it's funded by our members. Our members are ARM, IBM, ST Ericsson, Freescale, Samsung, and Texas Instruments. And uh, we are also going to be looking at additional members this year, and I'm going to talk about that later. Historically, in the ARM world, what has happened is that each licensee of ARM technology has gone and created their own core software and their own Linux implementation. There is no such thing as a single kernel implementation across all ARM SOCs. It doesn't exist like it does in other architectures. And the reason is the very strength of ARM, which is its ability to differentiate. With ARM, you can go and create your own version of the hardware. The problem is that everybody's differentiated in everything. And therefore, there's replication of core software. Think about memory management. Most vendors in the ARM world have created their own implementations of kernel memory management. None of them have been upstreamable. And so, one of the things that Monaro has spent the last year doing is helping to consolidate that problem. Defining what we call UMM, which is led by our graphics working group lead, Jesse Barker, in order to create a single universal memory management scheme that not only ARM and ARM's SOC vendors, but also third parties like the graphics uh, GPU providers can use as well. And this simplifies the task for the distributions. Um, and the result is faster time to market, less fragmentation, and higher quality. So, how do we stop everybody doing this again and again and again? Well, what Lenaro does is these founding members have agreed that this is crazy, right? It's crazy to go on repeating, redeveloping core software. It's expensive. So why not share that investment? Share the investment in common core software for Linux. From there, it will flow into the distributions. If we can provide core, single software that works as high quality, highly tested in the Linux kernel, then that will get integrated into distributions in future, and the overall cost will be less. That's not to say each company can't differentiate, but don't differentiate in common core software. Differentiate outside. So there are three things I want to talk about. I want to talk a little bit about Lenaro and membership. I want to talk about some efforts that are ongoing in Lenaro to measure and deliver high quality software that can be used by members in their own products uh, quickly. And I also want to talk about new ARM technology. Um, there's some very interesting things going on. We don't want to see fragmentation. 
So this year we expect to add several new members. We're seeing a lot of interest in Lenaro outside the existing members. And most of the ARM SOC vendors uh, are now talking to us about the return on investment that membership in Lenaro can bring. Part of that is because now after a year and a half, and because of all your efforts, we're delivering a lot of good software. People are seeing the change in the ARM community. We're seeing success in some of the consolidation and optimization that we're doing across all areas of Lenaro. And there's a recognition that members are seeing a return on the investment they're making in Lenaro, and they're hoping to see acceleration of time to market for their products based on ARM processors. It's also coupled to the fact that software engineering costs are increasing. Software complexity is increasing. And new ARM technology is, is actually going to make this worse. There's a lot of new architectural features coming into ARM that need a lot of open source work done into them so that they can appear in your mobile phone, in your TV, and even in your server. And there's a recognition in all of the ARM SOC vendors that there's a need for stronger influence in the open source community. Historically, Intel has funded an awful lot of what goes on in open source. But ARM is becoming more and more influential. More and more devices are shipping with ARM processors. Billions of ARM processors are shipping. And yet, proportionately, ARM does not have that representation in the open source community. It's difficult for each company to do this on their own. And so Lenaro, as a not-for-profit, is the place where the ARM SOC vendors are coming together to increase that influence in the open source community. And that's very much a focus for us this year. The other comment about new membership is that I expect Lenaro to go beyond mobile this year. Um, a lot of our focus in the last 18 months, quite rightly given our members, has been on the mobile phone sector. But even our existing members uh, are starting to see substantial business opportunities in other areas based on ARM processors around automotive, set-top box, digital TV, advanced consumer electronic devices. New ARM processors, both at the low end, capable of running Linux, the A5, Cortex-A5, and the high-end, multi-core, Cortex-A15, are seeing applications in a range of embedded platforms. And there's a lot of interest in low-power uh, server technology based on current and new ARM technology. That's not to say we're not going to continue to spend most of our existing resources on mobile. We expect as new members come in, they will have additional interests and we're going to be doing, using those additional resources to spend more effort on, on these more advanced technologies that are coming. And that will benefit everybody. So, Lenaro is becoming the place for all of the ARM licensees to influence and develop and engineer core software inside the open source community. And that's really our goal, is to be that place and to help our members. The second topic I want to talk a little bit about is testing and validation. Um, I come from a software operating system background, and testing was a huge part of what we, what we did. Um, in open source, because of the nature of the development of open source, um, testing gets done too late. It gets done by the manufacturer. Um, and, and the code was developed a long time ago, and it's kind of difficult to go back and, and fix problems at that point. So one of the things that, that I'm passionate about is that we improve the way we test and deliver software within Lenaro. And we've made a lot of steps towards that over the last 12 months, as I think all of our members know, in terms of the development of the LAVA framework, which is an open source test and validation platform that we've put in place for our members, but also for ourselves. It's a way that we can automatically test kernels that we're building, test software that we're building, 
um, on a range of different ARM boards. And this last year has been about building the tools. But this year we're going to add not only building the tools and continuing to develop them, but actually add a focus on building the test frameworks themselves. And the creation of a Lenaro testing suite available to members that will carry out a number of testing and validation features on everything that we do. And this is designed so that our members can demonstrate to their customers, to the OEMs and ODMs, the fact that the software that they're delivering isn't just a board support package that's a couple of years out of date on an old Linux kernel and it kind of mostly works and it's now over to you, but that we've really tested this in real life scenarios and that we have quantitative data on how good the stability and the performance of the software that we're creating is. And we're going to demonstrate that on members' hardware. So we're building, as most of you know, a farm of member hardware in Cambridge in the UK. That will continue to grow this year. But we're also going to create a Lenaro testing suite that covers not only smoke tests, but also for everything we do, basic functional and regression testing. And most importantly, in the area we're going to focus on initially this year, is being able to stress test kernel trees. So we're going to have additional resources that are finding tests that exist out in the community, but also writing our own, to stress the Linux kernel under some scenarios. And the reason we want to do that is to make sure that what we're delivering, particularly with some of the new technology I'm going to talk about shortly, um, has really been tested as well as we can do it. Um, this is going to be used not only for Lenaro staging trees, but also for the upstream trees. And indeed, when we first started doing this a couple of months ago, one of the first things we found was some bugs that nobody had seen before in the open source upstream trees running on our members' boards. So our goal here is to improve the quality of the deliverables that we have on our members' hardware. This also becomes important as some of the recent efforts in Lenaro that are building towards a single kernel tree uh, for all of our members' boards come to fruition. We today, in the landing teams, have a single source tree that is used to derive all of the builds that we make for our members' boards. Over time, as we've talked about in Lenaro, our goal is a single Z-image binary, but that's still a way away, and, and indeed, a lot of the efforts that are going on this year is, is, is towards that goal. So, second thing is a focus on testing and validation. So let's get to the interesting part. New ARM technology. Um, there's a lot of new ARM technology coming along and it's been recently announced. So one of the big efforts this year from the Lenaro is support of Cortex-A7, A15 and the new, what ARM are calling big, big little architecture, which is where on a single SOC you have a combination of high power A15 and lower power A7 cores. Architecturally very similar, cache coherent. Um, David's gonna talk a little bit more about this later, and there are some sessions on this this week. But there are two basic modes of operation that ARM has suggested for the, for the big little architecture. The first is where there's um, what used to be called a switcher and is now called task migration software, which is where the operating system really doesn't have to be modified. You just have a very small piece of software that switches the operating system from running on the high performance cores to running on the low performance cores, and vice versa. So you save power by running on the low performance cores. Um, the reason we're focusing on this today, we've had an effort going now for well over a month on this, is that the thing that Lenaro wants to stop is early adopter fragmentation. Let's not repeat the same mistakes again. Let's not all go off and do our own implementations and then realize that we've all done exactly the same thing in different ways. So what Lenaro is doing is focusing on building something that is product ready before silicon arrives. And this is going to be critical in terms of getting early, high volume products to market. 
doesn't take long from first hardware to actually deliver millions of phones to end users, and every phone manufacturer wants to be first to do that. So we have to be ready, and that means starting earlier than ever before. So our goal for this project, which has already started, is to have a release candidate that we have tested thoroughly on our models in May. And we're on target to meet that, that goal. There will be earlier releases uh, to interested members, um, alpha, beta, as we go through the development and testing. And our goal is to have product-ready quality. This is a real software product that will be part of the kernel that we're delivering upstream and to our members before it goes upstream, and we will provide support and maintenance for it moving forward. But that's only the start. In parallel, we're going to be tackling the longer-term uh, challenge with Big Little, which is a full multiprocessing system where the processes can run on any and all cores. So all of the cores, the big ones, the little ones, whether they're the same number or different numbers, are available to Linux. This is something that hasn't happened before, right? You, you haven't had the requirement for asymmetric multiprocessing, i.e., cores with different power characteristics and different performance characteristics in the kernel. And so there's a lot of new technology to go in here. The scheduler is going to be changed dramatically. This requires community uh, agreement on how to do this. And there will be discussions this week on that as well. Um, Arm is a big contributor, obviously, as the developer of the technology. Um, and together with ARM, Lenaro is helping the community come together to decide how we do this and then provide engineering resources to make it happen. But this is going to take a long time. A long time as in months, hopefully, or quarters, rather than weeks. So the goal is to have product-ready software with the task migration software first, and in parallel, to be working as quickly as we can to upstream the changes that are needed in the Linux kernel to support full multiprocessing across all these cores. Exciting stuff. The other thing that's happening <laughs> over the next couple of years is the introduction of ARM v8, which ARM have made some early announcements on. Um, and again, it's important for everybody involved in the ARM community to avoid early adopter fragmentation of the core software platform. And Lenaro's is, is goal is to help ARM to upstream the V8 support early so that it can be worked on and used by the community. And that's also going to involve testing and validation of multiple uh, distributions. That work has already started in terms of some of the things that Lenaro has been doing in, in hard float in, in David David's area in the office of the CTO, um, starting to use 32-bit distributions today as staging technology for where this is going to go. Today, this is a relatively small activity in Lenaro, but with the addition of new members, I expect this activity to significantly increase. And I know some of you here today are specifically here interested in these kind of developments for the future, and we welcome you. Please make sure you talk to, to David Russling, who's going to talk in a moment, um, who's our CTO, who's leading these efforts. So, three things. Building Lenaro's membership to give us additional resources to grow. We've gone from zero to over 120 engineers in a year and a half. With additional members, I expect Lenaro to continue to grow and be kind of probably around the 200 level or nearly twice the size we are today in a year's time. Second thing, in addition to the consolidation and defragmentation and the continuing work we're doing to try and bring the, uh, the ARM SOC licensees together for the, with this core software platform, we really want to increase the focus on testing without decreasing productivity. And thirdly, we really want to make sure that time to market is accelerated for new ARM technology and reduce the costs of developing for new ARM technology. Build a common platform that all of the ARM licensees can use to differentiate their products. Build that core big little software that everybody's going to use 
and then everybody can add their own differentiation on top. So the steps for all of this start this week. And as Stephen said, this week is not about actually us standing up and talking to you. Um, we just do that for about an hour a day in the, in the mornings uh, on any topics that you're interested in. But it's actually a week of intensive engineering effort. And there's something here for everybody. Uh, and if there's something that you're interested in that you think we should be working on, um, please talk to our new head of product management, Loic Minier. Would you like to stand up, Loic? Um, so, Loic. <laughs> Loic has taken on a substantial challenge, um, which is to focus on uh, product management within Lenaro. And so that, that involves everything from product requirements, new technology, um, through to product delivery. And so if there are things you think we should be working on uh, that we're not, or things we are working on that we shouldn't be, Loic is the person to talk to. Um, so with that, I'm going to hand over to the much more interesting um, people in terms of the engineering audience I have here which is David Rustling, our CTO, and then, and then Kiko, uh, our VP of Engineering. So David. Okay.